वेलकम टू प्रैक्टिकल मेडिसिन टूडेज टॉपिक इज पेन वॉट इज पेन पेन इज एन अनप्लीजेंट सेंसरी एंड इमोशनल एक्सपीरियंस दैट इज एसोसिएटेड विद द टिश्यू डेमेज वॉट इज पेन इट्स एन अनप्लीजेंट सेंसरी एंड इमोशनल एक्सपीरियंस दैट इज एसोसिएटेड विद द टिश्यू डेमेज इट हैविंग द सेंसरी इमोशनल एंड कॉग्नेटिव प्रोसेसिंग वी कैन क्लासीफाई पेन डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द ड्यूरेशन it's acute pain and chronic pain acute pain the pain that begins suddenly and sharp in quality it is considered as acute pain it is short in duration that lasts from minutes up to 3 months in duration and sometimes the acute pain may last up to 6 months it serves as a warning of a disease or threat to the body for example surgical pain traumatic pain that is related to broken bone cut injury or burn and one more thing it is the muscle strain that also cause the acute pain so that's about the acute pain chronic pain which pain we considered as a chronic pain the pain that is not associated with the cancer or other medical conditions that persists for more than 3 to 6 months chronic pain it is the type of pain that is not associated with the cancer or other medical conditions but it persists more than 3 to 6 months pain that lasts more than 1 month beyond the course of an acute illness or injury we can consider it a chronic pain the pain that is last more than 1 month but it follows the course of acute illness or injury pain that recurring at intervals of months or years it is also considered as chronic pain so there are three different types of things we can include in, as a chronic pain or inside the characteristic features of the chronic pain the pain that is not associated with the cancer or other medical conditions that persist for more than 3 to 6 months the pain that lasts for more than 1 month as a course of an acute illness or injury or the pain that recurring at the intervals of months or years when a patient comes to you with a history of pain what to ask and which things you should know from the patient if you ask patient then everything patient will tell you that means if you want to know something then you have to ask something to the patient and patient definitely will answer it you should be a good history taker so when patient comes with the history of pain you have to tell them describe the pain and how it is started is pain related to injury movement or the time of the day that means when pain happens you have to ask whether it is related to any type of injury or the movement that means when the person moves his arm or leg then the pain happen or the time of the day that means pain happen in the morning afternoon only evening only at the night likewise next thing you have to figure out the quality of the pain whether the pain is sharp dull or burning you have to find it out you have to ask the patient that whether the pain radiates or follow a particular pattern which things make the pain better or worse that means you have to ask the patient that either changing the posture having the effect on the pain severity sitting posture gives you the relief from the pain or the standing posture likewise you have to ask to the patient pursue the seven features of pain as you would with any symptom seven attributes of a symptom first one location where is it does it radiate to any other side or not you have to find out second thing quality what is it like so this questions when you ask to the patient the patient will tell you third thing quantity or severity of the pain how bad is it in that you have to rate the severity on a scale of 0 to 10 fourth one timing when did it start how long does it last how often does it come when you ask all these questions then it will helpful for you to understand the timing that is the important feature of the symptom fifth one onset that means how the symptoms has been progressed 
सिक्स थिंग लिमिटिंग और एक्सेबरेटिंग फैक्टर्स सिम्टम्स दैट रिलीव्ड बाय सम फैक्टर्स और इट इज इंक्रीज बाय सम फैक्टर्स दिस यू हैव टू फिगर आउट और यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट सेवेंथ वन एंड द लास्ट वन इट इज द एसोसिएटेड मैनिफेस्टेशन Here you have to ask the patient that have you noticed anything else that accompanied it and the patient will tell something that the pain is associated with this feature so that's how you have to correlate these are seven points of the symptom location quality quantity or severity timing onset remitting or exacerbating factors and associated manifestations all things you have to find out from the patient all things you have to ask to the patient when you ask patient will definitely tell you so all these features you should know as you would do with any other symptoms next point you have to ask the patient to point out the pain or the exact location of the pain because verbal descriptions can be imprecise you have to ask whether the patient took any treatment or medication before he came to your clinic and next thing you have to find out the comorbid conditions along with the pain like arthritis diabetes hiv aids substance abuse sickle cell disease or psychiatric disorders as it affect patient's experience of the pain so if the patient having all these comorbid conditions then these things happen that the pain severity can change so all these are the pain what to ask to the patient and which things you should know from the patient when you are taking a history of the pain you should note down the site of the pain character and severity of the pain duration of the pain frequency and periodicity of the pain radiation aggravating factors related to pain relieving factors and associated other factors all these things you should ask to the patient to know about the different characteristic of the pain now the assessment of pain severity there are three different methods are available the first one visual analog scale second one numeric rating scale and the third one wong baker faces pain rating scale so here it is the wong baker faces pain rating scale as the person to choose the face that best describe how he is feeling either the patient has to choose rather than i would like to say you should see from the face of the patient and try to find out or figured out the scale or the severity of the pain so the rating is from 0 to 10 here we are distributing it with a interval of 2 when the patient is very happy without pain that means phase 0 when the patient hurts just a little bit that means it's the condition or the scale of phase 2 when patient hurts a little more it's a phase 4 when patient hurts even more then it's phase 6 when patient hurts a lot then it's phase 8 when patient hurts as much as you think then it's phase 10 so that is phase 10 it is the highest level of pain that means it's the highest severity of the pain so that is the wong baker faces pain rating scale we classify pain in different five types nociceptive or somatic pain neuropathic pain central sensitization psychogenic pain and idiopathic pain first one nociceptive or somatic pain it is due to the tissue damage either skin muscle or skeletal system or the viscera in this condition of nociceptive pain sensory nervous system is intact it can be either acute or chronic type of pain the transmission of this pain impulse via the a delta type of nerve fiber or type c fibers a delta these are the fast fibers and type c fibers are the slow fibers or the slowest fibers now how the person is feeling the pain due to this tissue injury or tissue damage here the pain receptors are sensitized by the inflammatory mediators and effect is modified by both psychological process and neurotransmitters like endorphins histamines acetylcholine serotonin norepinephrine and dopamine now which things are happening over here 
once the tissue is injured or damaged it releases some neurotransmitter inflammatory mediators for example endorphins histamines acetylcholine serotonin norepinephrine and dopamine and all these things causes the stimulation of the nociceptors that means pain receptors and the afferent is carried by either a delta or type c fibers these are fast fibers and these are slowest fibers all right so that is the nociceptive or somatic pain when the skin musculoskeletal system or viscera got damaged then the pain is nociceptive or somatic type of pain when specifically viscera got damaged then the pain is visceral pain all right so that is the first nociceptive or somatic pain second one neuropathic pain when the neuropathic pain happens it is due to lesion or disease that affect the somatosensory system when there is some lesion or disease that are affecting the somatosensory system then it causes or it produces the neuropathic pain it persists after healing from the initial injury that means the injury has been occurred and the healing process has also been completed but the pain is still present and this type of pain it is known as neuropathic type of pain in which conditions the neuropathic pain are present for example central nervous system brain or spinal cord injury from the stroke or trauma peripheral nervous system disorders that causes the pain on spinal nerves plexuses or peripheral nerves and referred pain syndromes so in all these conditions the pain it is considered as neuropathic pain there is alteration in the neuronal central processing of the pain so that in this condition there is neuroplasticity has been developed and due to this development of neuronal plasticity the pain persists after healing process is completed so that is the mechanism why the neuropathic pain persists even after the healing process is completed because there is change in the central processing of the pain and the reason is there is development of neuronal plasticity related to pain signaling so it is about the neuropathic pain now the third one central sensitization there is alteration of the central nervous system pain processing and due to that there is amplification of the pain signals in the last slide we saw that there is alteration in the pain processing but there is no amplification of pain signals but in central sensitization there is alteration of the central nervous system pain processing and it causes the amplification of the pain signals one thing we have to note down that even if the pain is lower in threshold and the stimuli is non painful but still the patient responds it to a severe type of pain so that is the type of central sensitization of the pain for example fibromyalgia and this type of pain due to anxiety depression and somatization disorders this base respond to medications that modified neurotransmitters like serotonin or dopamine etc that means when we are prescribing the ansaid drugs it doesn't have any relief from the pain but when we prescribe some drugs that modify the neurotransmitters for example serotonin and dopamine etc then patient got relief it's called central sensitization and the cause either due to anxiety depression or somatization disorders now the next psychogenic pain the pain depends on psychogenic disorders like anxiety depression personality cultural norms and social support systems so this type of pain it is known as psychogenic pain fifth one idiopathic pain pain without any identifiable cause when the pain happens and it is without any identifiable cause then this type of pain it is known as idiopathic pain so all these five different types of pain nociceptive or somatic pain neuropathic pain central sensitization of the pain psychogenic pain and idiopathic pain before we are proceeding to the chronic pain management i would like to tell you some management of the acute pain first thing analgesics ansaids or opioids second thing treat the cause then the pain has been relieved specifically of the acute pain now the management of the chronic pain first you have to measure the pain intensity and interference you have to measure the mood for example treatable depression anxiety 
and post traumatic stress disorder PTSD you have to measure the effect of pain on sleep and in this you also have to measure the risk of co-occurring substance abuse measure the opioid dose and calculate the opioid dose equivalency so all these factors you should keep in mind when you are managing the chronic pain now which are the outcomes of the chronic pain you should figure out the analgesia when you are giving the treatment to the patient how much it is helpful to the patient you have to find out how much pain is relieved whether there is activities of daily living is improved or not whether there is any side effects or adverse effect that patient is experiencing while on the medication and see whether the aberrant drug related behavior is present or not so that is the chronic pain outcome i hope through this video now you understand pain if you like this presentation please try to share it with your friends group batch and colleagues thank you so much everyone